Hi guys, right rudder, left stick, and I am super excited to show you guys this today. This is the beta release 1.1 of the open source very large stick Mark II. Now, this guy has uh, gone through quite a lot of revisions. In fact, here's an earlier version of it. Um, but now I'm pretty happy with it, and I think it's ready to share with everybody. This one right here that I'm going to show you has the strongest springs that are currently in the plans on there. But on your stick, you'll probably want something a little bit less aggressive because my real tornado stick has quite a lot of heft to it. But in the plans now, there's also a Thrustmaster adapter, which this version here isn't the release version. Uh, I'm going to add a second screw, but for now, uh, just to demonstrate. So this takes a M36 thread, just like Thrustmaster sticks do. And then that goes right onto the aluminum extrusion and you can mount uh, existing sticks on it. For this part of the build guide, uh, we're just focusing on the mechanical uh, assembly of the gimbal. Uh, the electrical will probably come in a couple of weeks because um, I'm still working some of those plans out. But everything needed to build this guy uh, should hopefully, depending on where you are, cost less than 150 US dollars. Maybe even 100 if you shop around. And the whole guy uh, is one kilogram of PETG filament. Now there's a couple of things to note about printing this, is that you want to print with a, if you can, a 0 0.6 nozzle, which is what all of these were printed with. But more important than that, you need to double the line width of the uh, walls and of the top and bottom. So this was printed with four uh, walls, four top, four bottom, uh, instead of the default two. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what a 1.4 nozzle would be, but you want to definitely thicken that because the design of the load bearing surfaces depend very much on the strength of the outer shell of the pieces. Now the internal pieces actually use a very low amount of infill. I believe these are 15 or 20% for these parts. I'll, I'll put it in the video now what the number was. Um, and it's printed with a 0.24 layer height. Uh, and of course, all printed in PETG. Uh, I haven't tried PLA Plus, um, so I don't know if that would work. But yeah, these forces, especially, as you can see, I have to clamp it to the table here. These forces with these heavy springs, I'm not sure if the brittleness of PLA would be able to withstand the abuse. So for this plan, uh, PETG, if you're really ritzy, maybe carbon fiber, uh, but I personally haven't tried that. And then there are two kind of uh, variations about how to have it set up. This guy has the very, very heavy duty springs put into it. And this is a much lighter setup that has uh, the soft cams put into it for use in like a helicopter setup or warbirds. Um, the other thing too is that this is using standard V-slot 2020 aluminum extrusion, the sort of things that 3D printers are made out of. So you can cut this to any length that you want. Uh, and there'll be a future set of files that will include a uh, dog leg. So if you want to have it come up and that like that for like a helicopter cyclic. Um, uh, but you can also, whatever length is necessary for you. These are just scrap pieces. So these are all kind of a little bit on the short side. But also with the setup that I'm, my primary stick setup, you can see once it's slid on there. Oh boy. There we go. Once it's slid on there, it actually adds quite a lot of height uh, because I have the uh, a shift register board in there. Uh, and actually, if you happen to have a Tornado GR4 grip and you want these files, just let me know and I can share the CAD file with you for attaching it to this aluminum extrusion. So yeah, let's go and uh, start putting this guy together. This is a developmental version. A lot of tweaks, still little changes and stuff, but this is pretty close to the final version. But here, I have all the printed parts that are necessary for building version one. I also have here all the hardware required. Just lots of very exciting little springs, little springs and bearings, all the little bolts and screws, as well as some of the optional parts, such as these dampers, which I have a couple of notes about. So let's start building. So go through the necessary part list. 
first thing first is we're going to need two of these guys. So these are the top and bottom plate. They're referred to as pitch frame top plate. You need to print two of them. You need to print them on this orientation and you can see that it does require support which I promise is very easy to remove as you can see the support here. So in order to do that I'm going to take little flathead screwdriver, nice small one. Take this little screwdriver, you just stick it in there, and these supports pop right out. And there's other places in the design, this thing's wiggling a lot, other places in the design that require, that apologies about this top camera wiggling around, it's on a funky mount. Um, it's just there in case this other camera can't see something important. So I'm just gonna pop these out. Collect a lot of these over the course of the print. Um, I try and avoid anything that requires too much support material, but it's unavoidable. Um, and I just, you know, I want to print with the optimal layer line orientation. So uh, I, I prioritize that over printing without supports. So now we have these two pieces, and these make the clamshell that put the gimbal together. The next thing we need is pitch frame side plate. We'll take a couple of these. It's two of these. And these are printed in a slightly different color, but they're the same. Uh, and these will be necessary much later in the build, but these go on the sides here. So I'm going to put these aside. The next thing we're going to want um, actually are, just to show, these are the pillow blocks. They're called pitch frame uh, pillow block. They're two of the same thing. Uh, this one got damaged when I was testing something, but they're identical, so we'll need these later. Then, of course, we've got the cams, and for this demonstration, we're going to go with the medium cams, and I have four of the cams in the files. It comes with three different kinds for different flavors, different intensities of, uh, of movement, but they are all identical in their shape. Put these here. Then of course we've got these, which are the pitch uh, pitch frame gear side, which is this, and pitch frame cam side, which is this. And this guy also has some support material, which is easy to remove. Just get the flathead screwdriver in there, pop it off, just get it under there between the interface. You can just peel that right off. And then there's this piece that whoa, that just went into orbit. This is actually a critical section right here when it comes to dimension. And the reason why it's critical is that goes inside of the bearing, the larger bearing. The uh, bearing, which is, let me double check the name, the 6003 bearing. Now I have these little nail file removers. Um, they're really great if you can get them at a trade show, you get a handful of them. And then you can use that to just gently remove any burrs there. and it, if there's too much support material later on, we can get a big file, but that's usually enough. So this is that. We then have these two, which are the uh, roll frame. This is roll frame gear side, which printed a little bit funky. I was still fixing something on the printer. And then cam side. This also has that support material that you have to pop out. Same with these four spots. Um, the gear side refers to these gear teeth, which you can see the Pella block also have the, has these, these teeth. And these will be important later for when we install the dampers. Put this aside. And then we have the base, which this is called the main sleeve, I believe. And this is what the aluminum extrusion goes into. Um, this one printed a little bit funky as well. It was when I was adjusting something on the printer, but it still works. And this is the Thrustmaster uh, 36, M36 threaded. Uh, adapter. This is an optional piece. Of course, if you're attaching to a different stick or making a fully 3D, 3D printed stick, you don't need this, but that's included. So to start the assembly, we're going to start with our main column here. Now we're going to need the bigger washer or the bigger bearings, and those should just press fit. You might have to tap them in, which is the reason why it's always good to have a rubber mallet. So we're going to keep this on hand. We might need it later. So we got one. 
we've got, oh, we'll need that in a bit. We've got the second one. That's our axis there. Next thing is we're gonna have to go digging a little bit for some bolts. So I believe I need, I actually have a bolt measuring tool. So I'm gonna read these out as we go. This is an M5. And uh, if you go on Thingiverse, you can find these things. There's many different variations of it, but they're really helpful. I can check, check that it's an M5. An M5 by, oops. M5 by eight mil. I'm gonna need a couple of these. I'm also gonna need my T-nuts. These are the guys that go into the extrusion there. This is also the aluminum extrusion. The length of it will depend on your needs. This is just some scrap piece. And then I'm also going to need M5 driver, or a driver that fits in an M5, which I believe this is actually a four, but yeah, it's four mil hex head, but M5 thread. And we're gonna put that into that hole there and just kind of stick your finger in there just to hold the T-nut. And that's gonna be a little bit tricky for me to do on camera. And get that in there. Don't tighten it all the way, just enough that it grabs the threads. And we're gonna need a couple of those. We need one on the opposite side here as well. That goes in there. And that just threads opposite. Just enough, just enough so that it holds them in. Now we're gonna need two more here. That's M8. M8, these are all still uh, M5 by eight. These ones are a little bit trickier to reach. You have to really stick your finger in there. Um, Oops. Yeah, it's normal for this to be annoying. Um, and these might be a little bit overkill. You might not need to install all of them, but you know, depending on how much force you're gonna put onto the gimbal um, based on the springs that you choose, never hurts to make sure that this component has got a lot of points of contact so you don't rip the aluminum extrusion right out of the gimbal because all the force that's going down from your grip into the gimbal transfers through this piece. So it definitely helps to uh, to attach or to have a lot of points of contact. So I actually find this one is easier if I put the nut on my finger like that, hold it in, line it up, eyeball it, screw it in like that. Okay. And then I have one extra that goes through here, which if I remember correctly, I believe is this length. So let me check. It is a M5 by 16. So M5 by 16. This top camera shakes a lot. Um, this one's actually a little bit annoying in that the hole is a little bit burred, so I have to a fight to get it in there. I get the screw in, but now it's in. You know, some of these tolerances might differ based on your printer settings. Um, let's get that there. Get that piece of hardware in. Pull some cat hair out of there. Despite the cats not being allowed in the basement, their hair somehow makes it down here. So I've got this guy with his M5 hardware. Just my chair for comfort. I've got my M5 hardware. There is uh, the bearings that go on the face here. The the um, the roller bearings for this axis, which I believe are these. I'm actually kind of, it's been a while since I've put this guy together or since I took it apart last. Um, and these require actually some 3D printed pieces, which I'm not seeing here. That's interesting. A couple of pieces are unaccounted for. Oh, I couldn't see because I am from where I was sitting. So these are another things that I forgot to mention. These are, uh, let me double check what these are called. These are cam, or these are a cam bearing washer. There should be four of these big washers. Four of these guys. We don't need those just yet. We'll need those later. Actually, they go with the cams. And there should be two of these 
cam roller spacers. And this is what I need right now. So I have my M8 bolt. This one happens to be a hex head. It's not particularly critical what kind of head is on this guy. And this is an M8 by 35. It says 30, uh, yeah, my misprint there. 35, M8 by 35. Now, here's a little point. There are printed threads in these parts. And there are two schools of thought about how to do this. You can either hope that your printer's calibrated nice enough that these guys will thread in comfortably, or what you can do is you get preferably a nice long bolt, you heat it, and then once it's heated, you force it into the threads. It also works. Or you have a tap, and this is an M8 tap, and you clean up the printed threads, which I'm gonna do on this guy. You can see there's still a little bit of crap in there. But the important thing about whether you melt it, force it, or tap it, is that you don't fully thread it all the way. You want the bolt to be a little bit stiff, right? So I'm tapping this guy, but I'm not going all the way to the end because I want it to bind a little because these, while they do have lock washers, never hurts for the threads to be a little bit tight to keep these from backing out. So we're gonna use this M8 thread in a couple more, or it's M8 tap in a couple more places. So I'll put it aside. So I just cleaned up those threads there a little bit for demonstration. But yeah, we have our M8 by 35. We put in our first 608 bearing, which is just, you know, standard skateboard bearings. And let me focus a little bit closer for these foreground objects like that. Okay. I have our spacer. Now the reason why this spacer is smaller than the other ones is so that it doesn't interfere with the roller. We we'll put another spacer. We have these two guys here. And I already forgot an important component. So let me slide those apart again. We have these locking washers, an M8 locking washer, and what those are are washers that have a little split in them. That's a spring, or like a spring washer, they're also called. And that just means when you tighten it down, it pulls the threads, keeps it from backing out. Now NASA actually did a report about these many miles ago and said that they're completely useless. But I think that's because of the forces involved. But for what we're doing, they're perfectly fine. So we'll thread that on. And this one will need some persuasion. So I get it on finger tight until I can feel that that's as far as I tapped. And then I got my crank here, just tighten it down. Now I want to tighten it enough that that spring washer gets depressed. I can hear the squeal, the rollers still turn okay, not too tight, great. Put that aside. Now I've got our extrusion, that should fit right in. If it doesn't because of like globs and stuff like that, you might need to tap it through, but it should be a little bit oversized by I think half a millimeter. Um, and you also might need to adjust like this nut here. It's a little bit too tight and it's preventing it from sliding on. So I'm just going to actually hold that in place, loosen ever so slightly, then wiggle this guy on. And these nuts will be a pain in the ass. There we go, got that set on, got that set on. Oh, you can see these bottom ones. Oh, you might have to rotate them so they go in nicely. Yeah, I can see. There, almost, almost. Just trying to get them, and you know, if they're being really annoying, you can use the driver to try and set them at the right depth, almost. I think it's this guy now, oh, this guy. Oh boy, it's always one of these guys. Oh, this one actually needs to be tighter than it is looser. There we go, that's gone through. Get rid of this big long string cat hair. Extraordinary where these cats can get their hair. So here's another consideration based on your build. 
the way that the gimbal's built, because the bottom is open, actually like that, there is future plans for having a linkage system where the bottom of the gimbal has something that comes out the bottom. I haven't designed that yet, but at some point there'll be a linkage so you can link two gimbals and have them connected. That doesn't exist yet, so I'm not including in this build, so stick it flush. Now we can tighten in our M5 uh, socket head, are these socket heads? Yeah. M5 bolts, put that in there. There we go. That guy here, nice and tight. Not like, you know, super tight, but tight enough. Because don't forget these are tightening plastic into the aluminum, so, you know, they might crack if you over reef them. Now, there is a optional part that isn't required for the builds because they do add to cost, but they're pretty nice. And the, they are these things, which are rotary dampers. You can see it in the box here. This is an FRT C2 301 G1. Now that G1 is very important. Let me show you. If I open up this container, take this guy out. What this is, it's a rotary damper. What it means is that it resists rotation, right? It's stiff to turn. Okay, and it's because there's silicone, liquid silicone in there, or maybe a pad, I'm actually not sure, and that just resists its rotation. Now, if you order the wrong one, like I did, you can get, um, I think these are, these are FRT C2 301 R1. Now, the reason why it's R1 and not G is that these guys, while they look completely identical, actually they have a metal shaft, but they're functionally identical, only dampen in one direction, which for our purposes, see if I go that way, it's stiff, that way I can turn it as much as I want. For our purposes, useless. I think these are designed for like door hinges so that they open easy, but they're slow to close or something. But for what we need them, completely useless. So that goes, and these were 10 bucks each. Uh, now that I'm in Europe, I was able to find these for about 12 bucks each. That's why they're optional because they do add to cost. But we have the first one to install here. And it goes right there. And for that, they are small screws, which I have to dig out. There's one. They are M2s. Or no, M3s. Um, there they are. Now, for this, doesn't matter too much what kind of M3 screws you're using, other than the maximum length because it needs to go into the side. So if it's too long, it's gonna hit the extrusion. That's no good. So I think this one right here is the longest screw that is a M3 by eight. It's the longest one. And I always put the long one at the bottom because the bottom is the one that's gonna be getting the most amount of force. It's closer to the fulcrum, so it makes sense to have that be a longer one. And these are Phillips heads, but you can use whatever flavor you like for this. Um, and there's actually, if I show you, jump ahead a little bit, on the gears, there's actually an access hole. So when the gimbal's assembled, you can still either remove them, break, because I don't know how durable these things are. I mean, I've been testing them, but I don't know, after a year or so, maybe they'll fail. Um, but also if you want to add them after the fact. And the way that the teeth engagement, there's like a, maybe a millimeter of play vertically. So what I do is once I have a axis all squared up, is I'll loosen these screws, run it back and forth, the gear along the teeth, like the teeth and gear meshing, and then tighten. And that'll help adjust the um, gear mesh distance. But yeah, now this Phillips driver is actually a little bit too big. So I tighten that most of the way in. And then because it's open, see it's open on that end, you can just slot right on. Oh. You don't want to over tighten it because it'll shoot up. You saw that, that it, if I over tighten it, it'll 
go that way. So I need to make sure it's not too tight until I get the next screw installed. And this is just a short M3. It's actually like a hard drive screw. Just tighten that for now. Tighten that down a little bit. Tighten that down a little bit. There we go. So this guy goes there. Next piece is actually the piece I was talking about. So there's this guy, he goes down there and you can actually see what that does is it resists, right? If I, it has a silicone and it adds resistance. That's really important. Another optional piece, and this is simply optional because it's annoying to find, is uh, these Teflon washers. Now these Teflon washers you get from AliExpress and I have a link to the store page. Um, I don't remember the exact dimension. Oh, I know I have it written down here. They are interior diameter 18, exterior diameter uh, 24.7, and they're one millimeter thick. And they just sit right there. And then on the other side, there's a little recess that they go into. And that adds an extra level of friction, uh, like a dry clutch, just to help with the resistance. And you don't really feel those working until everything's clamped together. Okay, now that we've got that on there, next thing we're gonna need are these guys. These guys take bearings as well. Now that, that's the one that I filed earlier and it just fits on there, nice. This is another M8 that needs to be tapped. You can force it too. This one in particular, you have to be careful though, if you do force it, is this is the layer line axis, so it could split. And actually, that's what happens if you force it and the bolt isn't hot enough, it'll actually, if you can just make it out there, crack. So, and this is a load bearing thing because this is what pushes against the cams. So you don't want this to crack on you. It's another reason why that there is an extra double layer lines, like that double walls, double tops and bottoms, just to increase the uh, layer adhesion uh, on this part in particular, but others as well. So I'm just tapping this through. Okay. I want to tap it all the way because I still want it to bind at the end. Just enough so that the screw can go most of the way in. And here's another important thing that I believe is never ever use a tap with a drill. I don't give a shit how much time it saves. Don't do it. For the hundreds of hours that you save by using a drill with one of these things, it takes one broken tap to ruin your fucking life. So don't do it, it's not worth it. You're tempting faith. You know, and even getting a broken tap out of plastic, not a big deal, but just don't do it. It's just a bad, bad, dirty habit. It promotes, you know, recklessness with these tools and then it'll snap on you and then you'll be completely screwed trying to get it out. Okay, so this guy's set. I've got this guy who is the other uh, damper. Grab my other damper. I'm gonna take these to the side. Even though I showed you them first, we actually don't need them for a while. Um, open up my damper. Get that out. Now this one doesn't have any restrictions on bolt length for the M3 because, well, look at it. So I use a real long one because it's one that I had kicking around. But as long as it's over, you know, eight millimeters, it should be fine. And actually, um, let me just get this guy in there. I'm gonna screw it in without the damper on there just to get it most of the way through. This is one that I actually did tap with an M3 tap um, because of its length. Yeah, get that most of the way in. Now, in this build guide, I'm not gonna cover any of the electrical setup, but I will go over mounting um, the sensors, uh, just showing how they're supposed to be mounted. Um, the reason why I mention that is that this is where the magnets are supposed to go, but I don't actually have any super glue, so I'm not gonna put them in. Um, get that guy out. Oh, forgot, brilliant. So, you can't, you gotta get one in before you put the other one in, otherwise it gets stuck. So let's stick that guy in there. in, 
get that guy in. And like I said, don't tighten it down all the way just yet. We can do that later. There we go. And then another one of the 6003s. Just fit that down there. These, you can see that I built this once before because those are fitting on perfectly. Um, okay, so now we've got these two guys. Now you have to decide which side. It doesn't really matter which side, but it's modular, so you can have it have it that way or whichever to match how it was built before um, it's peg side this side and these registration pegs should hold it nice and firm there we go well actually before I do that let me put the rollers on this guy so this one uses a different bolt I believe it's this guy which uh, is longer than my scale I think no no it is a m8 by 50 and here, again, I will need my lock washer. I'll need a skateboard bearing. I will need my spacer, a roller spacer, skateboard bearing. And that guy goes right there. And actually, I'm just going to get it most of the way down. Now, there are M8 washers, like regular washers that are used in this kit, but these things have space, like a, like a little raised part that sets them off of the surface of the, uh, the bearing so that it doesn't block it, so it doesn't need a washer. Okay, and here you can see where I got to the end of the tapped area. See I, see, I want it to bind a little bit, plus that's where it's thicker, so it's less likely to crack. Um, and I didn't want to over like tune the threads perfectly because everybody's printer is different. I didn't want threads that are too loose because then that's useless. Okay, there you go. Those still roll. Good to go. Stick that guy on there. Here's where it gets annoying. I gotta put that Teflon washer in there, but it's not gonna stay seated, so I'm gonna have to hope that this goes on and put that down like that. It should. It should be a little bit wobbly like that because we want this to squeeze down on the part. So now I need to put in my two M8 by 50. Let's go in there. Similar here. And on the other side, M8 nylon lock nuts. So these are the nuts that have a little bit of nylon in them. And those drop right in there. Oops. I'll just start with one. And that's why these are recessed so that it didn't need to be a 55 because finding, like I wanted to pick hardware that was more readily available and trying to find a mid, um, like a 55 instead of a 50 was annoying and a 60. So that's why it's slightly recessed on this piece for the head. So yeah, tighten that in. Don't tighten it hundred percent just yet because we have to do the top. And the top has a couple of steps before we get to Assembling it, so I'll just get it so it's holding it together. Okay, put this guy aside. And now, we're onto our cams. So for these cams, that's where we need these guys. All right, we need four skateboard bearings each. We need Regular M8 washers, like I said. We need spring washers, like that. And spring washers will go with it. And then we need these bolts, which I believe are M8 by 80. These are M8 by 80s. So let's put together the first one. Put the spring washer in there first. Put it aside. Spring washer in the other one. Put it aside. Let's take our M8. Bearing, these might need to be tapped in with the hammer. So be gentle with them if you have to do that. These ones have already been hammered in, so they snap in, because it's already, the plastic's already been expanded ever so slightly. Okay. Get that guy in there, put our little spacer in, put the other bearing on. Now, goes through like that. There we go. Wash around the back. Now, the other one needs to go through the other way. And you'll see why in a minute. Washer goes in. 
reason being is these cams are mirrored to each other, so they go through each other without hitting each other, obviously. Um, but they're the same design, like the same part. So this guy goes here. And then we put our nylon nut there. Gonna hand tighten it for now. Another nylon nut. Next one goes over top. Nylon nut. Get that in there. And just get it enough that it's finger tight. And then we get to ratchet socket wrench. Sure, that's actually in the uh, hole. The nut is on the hole. Okay, there you go. Now it's binding. Now I can. You don't want to over tighten. You just want enough that the spring washer is flattened, but not too tight that the bearing fights you. And it's important that you keep that there's enough space here that this isn't rubbing. Just want to make sure you don't push that down by mistake. And if it feels a little bit stiff, might be because the bearing's being compressed too much, so walk it back a half, like a quarter turn. Maybe, maybe a half turn. Just so that these move smoothly. And there we go. And that's our cams, right? Now, we need to install the springs. Installing the springs based on the strength of spring can be a real piece of shit. And for that, it's time to bring out the power tool, just so we're not having to use all our strength on the spring, uh, or on the cam and the screw and the spring and everything at the same time. So let me make sure I've got the right bit. No, no, what? Yes, that is the right bit. What am I talking about? Okay, oops. Now these, these are ones that you will want to tap a little bit just to start them, especially if this is the print side and it's blocked. But the bigger spring goes on the bottom and these ones don't tap um, because you want it to be really stiff. If it cracks, okay, maybe you need to adjust your print settings or maybe tap it just like the first half centimeter, but you really want this screw to bottom because it is, there's a lot of force trying to rip this screw out. So anything you can do to give it a hand is good. There's that. Now to get the next one on, this is a real piece of shit. So I take this guy, and unfortunately we won't be able to do this trick with the other side because it'll be blocked, but this is a trick that I kind of do here. So I get it on the driver, and then I just kind of get it started. No, it's too stiff. So this is, this is where this thing becomes a real piece of shit. Problem with this thing is it's got a ball end on it. Let me see. Let me see these are straight. Yeah, these are just straight ones. Because if it's a ball end, it's, it's not you're not gonna be able to get any leverage on it. So I'm gonna take this straight one and try and oh wait, fuck. Get that there. Get it started. Oop. See this is where maybe having the first centimeter or half centimeter tapped will help. At least getting it to catch. But basically, I'm trying to ugh. Get that on there. And once it's started, force it in there. <laughs> Real stiff. Oh yeah, that's a stiff spring. And then I have a little tweaker springs that I added to the design. These are for if you want a really light spring force um, because you're using it as a helicopter and you really just want the spring as a, something as a counterweight, you know, like something to keep the stick vaguely centered, but not really. Or if you're a madman like me, you do it because you want the springs to be even heavier and having an extra spring never hurts in that regard. Now, ugh. Keep grabbing that one like it's gonna help me. So get that over there. Yeah, and get that on there. Get as much thread as I can with the hand, and then do the rest with the drill. Just insanity. 
And there's enough spring force loaded onto these cans that if they explode, they will hurt you. So, uh, you know, at least knock out your eyes. So be careful with that. But yeah, so that's a spring. It is stiff. It is a stiff motherfucker. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Oh, I haven't actually put this together with both springs on it and it is fierce. This might actually, we'll find out if the cable can take that amount of force. Now that we've gotten these top ones tightened, we can tighten the bottom ones. Probably could have done that before we put the springs on, but just kind of do it to here, start hearing crack and then you know you're going, yeah, I heard a crack, little, that means you're starting to crush the infill, so you're probably going too far. There we go. Or just far enough. Yep. And then this guy's nice and good, nice and stiff. Oh, okay. That is our roll stage or pitch stage, depending on how you orient your gimbal. In the files, it's roll, but it can be pitch. Doesn't matter. Now we got our pellet blocks. Now these are identical, but in because of how I fucked something up um, or I broke something on this one, uh, this is going to be have to be one certain side. One note: these are definitely worth tapping. Not only the M8 holes, but also the M3s. Just tap them ahead of time because it's easy to access it when it's like this. Once it's assembled, not so much. These are for mounting the cams onto. These are going to be for, or these are for mounting the sensor. And these are gonna be mounting um, PCBs once like, we get to that stage. Right now, I'm not doing any electrical, but I will show you how the sensors are supposed to go on once it's time for them. But I just have a, these are the AliExpress TLE 5050 or 5051s. Basically, um, well, that's set up the wrong way. I don't know why it's, it's put it together backwards, but basically how it's gonna go, oh, I lost that screw, is when it comes time for installing them for real, there's gonna be these spacers in here, right? Those spacers. So I'm not gonna put them in all the way because it doesn't, just wasting time for now. You screw those down and then the sensor with the letters facing up for consistency and then you set that down there and you center it. Oh, and the important thing too is these little magnets it comes with, which I'm not gonna glue in right now because I don't wanna glue anything until I got all electrical figured out, like, you know, the whole plan set up. But uh, it's of course sucks a bunch of nuts. But basically that little magnet, uh, you find it's north direction or north or south, just it's axis on this way. You stick it in there and you glue it. Just put a little dab of super glue. And then yeah, that sits there and then you put the screws in there and you can adjust it for centering. And that's how the um, axis sensors will work. But for now, we're not installing them. We're just focused on the mechanical. Another thing as an optional part is counterweights. Cause as you noticed, this guy is definitely heavier on one side. So this is an additional part. It's uh, just some M5 bolt that's long enough. And then you take M12 washers. Um, I haven't actually weighed the exact balance yet because I was changing infill settings. But basically, I, you know, I got like seven washers on each side. And then you just screw those in. And actually, I'll use the drill for it just to save everybody time. That's the right one. It's actually a Torx bit, but I won't tell anybody if you won't. That goes in there. And that's what those M5 holes are for, is for mounting these counterweights. And the amount of counterweight will depend on a lot of factors. Um, I might come up with the best amount, but for now, this is my first attempt at... Oh, the M5 pole is gorged out a little bit. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm just gonna, there you go. M5 is a little bit messed up. Always like how the screws get hot when you do that, which is good, and then it's cutting threads, it's melting threads in the plastic. Um, I mean, it's probably not the best way of doing it, but in a, in a, in a bind, it works. So yeah, so get that in there. Start the threads on it, and then I'll just hold the hold the washers as it goes down to align it. There you go. There, that's 
puts my counterweight on. Nah, it's, it could use a bit more. It could use a little bit more. Maybe, you know, four more or three more washers on each might do it, but fine for now. Okay, so now we can put the pillow box on. So we're gonna start with the one that we're gonna use on the gear side, which is the one that I broke and I marked it as gear side. That goes right there. Oh, first we have to put in our Teflon washer. So in that case, I'm gonna do this side first, just so that I can sit upright, because I can't sit the other way. So I get out our little Teflon washer, line it up there. There's a hole for putting an M5 bolt in there if you want to add some extra strength by running a pin through there, which I believe I don't, I do have included in the plans. I think that's what this is. No, it's this guy. This is an M5 by 16 as well. And that is for going in there just to add a little bit of strength. Just so that if that pin has got the metal in it. I don't know if it really does that much, but whatever. Um, okay, so this is the cam side I'm gonna put in. So I have to kind of keep the Teflon ring from moving around too much. So I want it to stay centered. There you go, get that on there. Now I can tip this over and it will stay upright. Um, other Teflon ring. All right. Kinda, oh, see, it's moving, so I, I have to use my finger to keep that ring centered, that washer. And here you can see a gear. And I can feel that the gear could use some adjusting, so I'm going to run my Phillips in there. Loosen that ever so slightly. Loosen, oh, that's fine. Loosen that slightly. There you go, kind of wiggle it. Run it, run it, run it, okay. You know, and then tighten it. Yeah, that's much better engagement of the gearing. Do the same on this guy. Oh, it's already got the, of course I already put the springs on it, so I actually can't really feel if it's Good, but I think it's actually pretty okay. So I'm going to tighten those guys, make sure these guys are nice and tightened. And if you're really crazy, you can put grease or, or lubricant on there, which might not be a bad idea, but I'm, for now I'm not doing it. Okay, now we finally come back to this piece, which actually has our wonderful Jay Waller and uh, Gene Buckle, uh, my two uh, flat spin. I think it's flat spin Patreon supporters who've been a really great support. Who've, paid for all of this film and all this hardware and all this time and repairs to the printer over there. So without them, this whole thing wouldn't be possible and their names are nicely printed, well, nicely is figurative, <laughs> nicely printed on my very uh, out of uh, loose um, print head, but you know, if you have a better printer, you'll be, hopefully be able to read their names. Uh, but it's printed on the inside there, it's a nice little call out. Um, so let's put this guy on there. So these kind of go into the little um, recesses, the little squares that are here, that just fits right in. You might need a little bit of persuasion. There we go. There we go. And the top goes on the same way. And it's reversible, it doesn't really matter which way it goes. And there we go. Now we have... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of spring. Oh, that's a lot of spring. Um, <laughs> it's the first time I've put that much spring on it. Um, well, I've tested like an isolation. It seems to be okay with that amount of force, but it's the first time I've got everything loaded with those springs at the same time. Um, so now what we need is the M8, four M8 by 100s, and these go in through the bottom like that. Now, here's a point for um, people who build um, sim pit is you can get longer bolts, right? And if you cut out the floor of your gimbal or of your cockpit and then have this stick through, you can then have these bolts stick out and then you kind of bolt it up against it, or you can do it the other way. The other thing is that these holes on the side here or on the tops here are spaced for the uh, NXT uh, spacing, which I don't remember the exact numbers are, but they're M6 holes. These holes here are um, spaced so on 4040, like a metric aluminum extrusion, you could run bolts through the back of it for mounting onto there. 
Um, and then these are extra M6 holes here for other mounting options. Anyway, so we've got these M8 by 100s. We got lock nuts that go on the top, right? These are the nylon lock nuts. Get that in there. Get that in there. That in there. That in there. Also got, so these are the M6 bolts. I'm not gonna put them on because they're not necessary, but that would be for going onto a, mount, a rig that uses the NXT spacing. Okay, so to do this, this is actually a little bit annoying in that I kind of have to clamp one side, actually. I grab my, this guy and... This is a dirty little trick, but if you just have, you know, you can get a screwdriver or something in there, but I'm using another socket head. There we go. Stick that there. Stick it on one side of the, uh, the nut, and then kind of Now you're going to want to do it until it starts really creaking. Yeah. That's good. And then opposite corners. Always do opposite corners so that the forces, like it doesn't distort unequally. So now we're into this guy down here. Also, you feel like an airplane, airplane mechanic using this. Actually, I'm going to move that there. Feel like a real... Play okay, and then this guy here. There we go. That's why I always like using the extension because then you can grab it, twist it with your hand. why we're putting the box together before we put on the next set of cams and that's because the spring force of those cams will actually distort the entire box so we have to get everything nice and rigid before we put them on so much so that the side plates go in now too and those ones might need a little bit of persuasion to kind of put in um, but yeah these need to go on before we do the cams because the whole box will distort and these help distribute the load. Um, might actually have been a good idea to put these in before we tighten the box down so much. So these are M4 by 20s. These are M4 by 20s. Technically, you could use shorter ones, um, but I use M4 by 20s for the cam screws. So the things that go into the cams, M4 by 20s. So I like to just keep everything the same size so that you know you buy a box of 50 of the thing and you don't just use two. Now in the design it's open um, because I'm trying to keep everything under one kilogram of filament. In the future there'll be expand there'll be an expansion set of files that enclose the gimbal completely, other than where the stick comes out. And uh, we'll obviously put it over the one kilogram amount. And there's still other files to come for this design, which will come when I release it, which is the mount for the Arduino. Um, but I just haven't designed that yet because it's not a priority at the moment. Because for testing, I've just been using a breadboard. But that'll come, and that'll keep it under a kilogram. And here I'm doing the same thing, even though I just messed it up. Um, and I should have done it on the other side, is always do opposite corners so that things don't distort. Okay, almost there. Okay, 
Now the box is as rigid as it's gonna be. Oh yeah, that's a lot of, oh, mackerel. That is a stiff, stiff, stiff gimbal. So let's do the cams. So let's dump that out. Don't need that anymore. Get these bearings put in, we did this once. So we can do it again, the same idea. Put the spacer in on the other side. Nice and good. It's much easier to put these bearings in once they've been hammered in once. <laughs> and if these are loose when you print them, you can try and reprint them with different settings or just put a little bit of tape, like a very small amount of tape um, on the bearing and then just kind of shove it in there to shim it. Because you want these bearings to stay. You don't want this to be sliding in and out. So now we have our M8 by, I think, 35. Yeah, M8 by 35, the same one we used in here on, on that guy. Again, trying to reuse the same lengths of screws so that when you buy a pack of them, you use all of them, or most of them. We got our spring washer. We got our cam. We got our washer. Put that aside. Same for this guy, get our spring washer. Drop that on. We're going to put this one the other way so it comes up on the face. Stick that there. Now, the way that we shoved the cams on on the other one is not going to work here because we simply don't have access at the bottom because of this. So what I'm going to try and do, and I don't know if this is actually going to work, I might end up looking like a jerk on camera. Oh, speaking about looking like a jerk on camera, I am short. Some of my screws because in the original plan I didn't have these installed. One second. So these are the M4 by 20 um, and I'm actually going to, whoops, dropped a washer. I'm actually going to um, put a springs on these guys before. Try this, see if this works. Stick that there, oops. Get that started a little bit. On. And then this guy, um, I'm actually going to do it like that, interleave them, like bring them closer a little bit so I don't have to load the spring. And then the little spring I can put on once it's installed, but... Okay. See what happens when I try this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so my bolts are falling off. Got this. Got that. So I'm going to keep that bolt off for now. I'm going to try and hold the washer on with my finger. Get that first one installed. This one should be no problem because there's no load on it. Get our wrench. Get it not all the way because I still want to have a little bit of adjustment for I try and get the next one on. Okay. That's biting. So it's biting, I can move on to the next one. So the next one, get the, get that guy in there. Oh, oh, and I already fucked up. You know what I messed up? This is the one that should be loose because this is the one on top of the other one. Washer, get that washer in there. Okay, now that's biting. Now I have to wrestle with this guy, get the teeth, just get it started a little bit. Use this to kind of fight my way into the hole. Oh, that's what she said. Or he in his pride month. Um, or they. Ugh. Kind of get that. Got in 
here. Oh boy, I really, yeah, this is not going so well. Um, really tough. Put that in there. Okay. Put the threads in there. Let's see if I can get it to bite. Some downward pressure on it. I don't want to let go of it until it gets partially. Okay, now I've got a little bit of thread. Now I got to get this cam onto the roller, push it down, and then tighten it. So I have an extension is nice. Kind of just manhandle it. Okay, now let's go. Now they're mostly on. Now it's just to tighten it down. And again, not too much, just enough that the spring washer is flat, but not too much that it causes the bearings to bind. There we go. And the next time. Ooh. Excellent sound. <laughs> Jesus. Wheel boy. Okay. There we go. That's on. That was a little bit of a battle. Now for these guys. First one is easy enough. Second one, not so much. Now I did it before using the oop, wrench to get it started. <clears throat> See if I can do it with my ball ball tip. Now the ball tip is going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, because it's got that little ball edge. That way. Okay. There. So I'm using it to hold it straight because it doesn't have a ball tip. And once I get it most of the way in, finish it with the drill. Now, that is pretty darn stiff. We're not done yet, necessarily. Oh, here's where I was talking about where it can stick out the other end. Now, you can decide which way you want the front to be, if it's this, or if it's this. Depends on how you program your part, or program the axes. But if you're using a Thrustmaster stick, for whatever reason, the, this is, um, the adapter for it. And it's the M36 threads, and it goes on very straightforward. It's the same M5 by um, 8 mil with the T nuts. So, same thing as the very beginning of the video where you kind of stick your finger in there, just get it started. Now, Reason why I was saying if you really want to use this is because the I don't have a Thrustmaster grip or a Burpill or anything that uses that connector. In fact, my sticks are all homemade 3D 3D printed monstrosities or real flight hardware um, that I've modified to work. Um, is that the mock-up Thrustmaster stick is the um, the Simnet's excellent B8 uh, grip plans that he has online. I, I printed just the bare bare essentials of it. To use for mocking up, um, and it's a really great design, but it's very thin. It has a very thin outer body, so there's potential that when I test this very heavy springs out, it'll snap off, which will be very very funny if that happens. Anyway, it's all pretty straightforward to how to how to put these on. Right, okay. kind of tighten down, and there's a channel here or a little groove that corresponds with this, so that'd be for running the wire down. And you'd use a, a PS2 extender, like a keyboard extender, where you're ripping out the pin, or you could go out and buy the, the real component, which I'll research for when I do the electrical um, build of materials. I'll find out on DigiKey what connector it actually is meant to be if you want to make it. 
But yeah, so this is the completed gimbal. You can see, wah, stiff. In fact, to make this demonstration work, let's get some clamps. So if you're using this gimbal, especially with this amount of spring force, you're definitely going to want to invest in a sim pit that can handle it, because it is a fierce, fierce amount of spring force. Um, too much, actually. Well, to be fair, on a F-18, according to the guys at the Open Hornet, who have a lot of really great resources about the F F-18, a full back stick is 40 kilograms. Or sorry, 40 pounds. Um, I can't remember what it is in kilograms, but 40 pounds back stick. So if this feels like a lot, the real things can be much, much more aggressive. But yeah, that is, oh, that is stiff. Now, of course, once it gets higher, leverage will reduce the amount of force that you feel, but that is still a considerable amount of force. Definitely a workout. Now, let's put on our so the SimNet. Uh, it's just draft printed, not super high quality. Um, it's a good de design. I didn't do it justice because I was just printing it for prototyping with. Um, and it has a M36. I think it's M36 or maybe M38. Maybe it's, I think it's 36. Collar that screws down like a Thrustmaster stick would. And you just thread that on. And then, oh yeah. Oh, that's stiff. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it's a lot. If you were flying for a couple hours, you would definitely feel it. Um, but it, you know, if the stick's longer, if you have a longer extension, like it's mounted on the floor, and you're sitting uh, upright like an office chair, with the amount of length that you have, it actually wouldn't be that bad. But yeah, you can see the cams are operating down there. Now with these medium cams, there is a degree of center, I wouldn't say a detent, but you can definitely feel a hard center position. And actually there's a creak there. You need to you hear that bump. And that bump is actually this piece here. So I might adjust the design so that this extends down another, like has two holes instead of just one in the center like that, because it can just because of the weight of the stick, you can actually yeah, hear that? That's it. See, it doesn't do it front to back. And the reason why it doesn't do it front to back is there's two screws there. But here, there's just the one. There is definitely a center position. Like, you can feel the center. But there's no detent at all. Just like you'd expect out of a cam-based design. You can feel on those medium cams. So there's only a little bit of displacement in the middle. And then as it goes out, it goes to full deflection. And you can see just the amount of flex that the gimbal has on the table. That's the table flex. That's me pushing down on the table. That's the damper. You can see it reduces the, there's still, because of the strength of the spring, it still wiggles a little bit, but it definitely does a lot to help reduce the springiness of the stick. I really want to thank our Patreon supporters who have helped tremendously in putting this guy together, especially uh, Gene Buckle and Jay Waller, who are my Spiral Dive tier supporters. You guys have supported uh, quite a lot in the hardware and the PETG filament and repairs to the 3D printer and all the craziness that it's taken to get this guy put together. And if you're out there and you'd like to get early access to these files before they're publicly available, or some of the exclusive update content that's on my Patreon page, please check out patreon.com slash right rudder left stick and sign up. There are uh, several tiers. There's the flat spin tier for $5 a month, which is early access, uh, spiral dive, which includes a printout on the STL file uh, calling you out for your support, and also a crazy tier that if somebody wants to actually help me get a actual Thrustmaster grip to test with, uh, that would be great. I want to thank my flat spin tier of JP, Yasiro Tanaka, Neil, Mark Ping, MK, and I really want to thank my spiral dive tier, Jay Waller and Gene Buckle. And I also want to thank the original creator of the Object 77B, which is what this whole design is based off of. Uh, it was Caravan on the uh, Isle 2 uh, Russian forms. 
It's a really great design. Uh, if you're making a regular size light stick, definitely check it out.